If you've turned on the news at all lately, you have likely seen some uh, horrific scenes from the Sierra Nevada. Giant smoke plumes, uh, trees being engulfed in flames in just a matter of seconds. Uh, the rim fire is gobbling up portions of the Sierra Nevada, including a corner of Yosemite National Park at a staggering rate. Uh, as we mentioned in our news segment not that long ago, it has already consumed well over 200. Wait, let me make sure I have this right. <laughs> I want to. I don't want to just be throwing it off. 200 square miles of land, an area about 20 percent larger in size than the entire city of San Jose. Uh, we mentioned that San Francisco's water supply is in danger and as it uh, surrounds the Hetch Hetchy Reservoir and a couple of hydroelectric uh, power plants have already been shut down, a state of emergency in place. We were happy to say that uh, evacuation orders are no longer in place for residents of Pine Mountain Lake and Buck Meadows. One community that is definitely uh, been affected by this is the Highway 120 town of Groveland. It is home to a historic property, uh, the beautiful, absolutely beautiful Groveland Hotel uh, sits there. And the innkeeper, owner of the Groveland Hotel, joins us on the uh, Eat, Drink, Explore live line right now. Peggy Mosley, welcome to the program, and we certainly hope that things are getting better for you in Groveland. How are you? We're absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much for having us this morning. Yes. Uh, things are looking really well. Uh, we have been filled with uh, media, uh, fire management folks, and law enforcement for the last several days. And uh, it seems to be moving more towards the East Sonora area mm -hmm. of um, Tuolumne City now. Uh, as you mentioned, the uh, corner of Yosemite has been impacted but the um, Yosemite Valley, the icon, is totally intact and welcoming visitors. Yeah, so, Peggy. Oh, uh, go ahead, Peggy. We're just very grateful and to our firefighters, who are absolutely our, our Navy SEALs of the world, if you will. And um, yeah. we just really appreciate them. Mm -hmm. Peggy, I know that you can really relate to the effort of the CAL FIRE and the other agencies are doing by air. Uh, did you not used to run a flight school, own your own flight school? Yes, I did in uh, Reed Hillview Airport in San Jose. It was called Aero Systems. And uh, we had, uh, it was a, a small operation. We had six aircraft and we had about eight uh, flight instructors that worked with us. And then we were the uh, base for the Aviation Explorer Post that were sponsored by Lockheed. And your town right now, as you said, is no not filled at tour, with tourists at a time when it would be peaking. This is a peak month for you, tourist-wise. It's also Labor Day holiday. <laughs> right, right the big Labor Day weekend coming up. And instead, uh, you have the town filled with uh, e efforts to contain this fire and also the, I imagine, national and possibly international media because Yosemite is known worldwide. That's correct. Actually, I received an email yesterday from a former guest in Switzerland wanting to know if we're okay. Oh, that's nice that, to hear that, that yeah. you have uh, those sentiments from throughout throughout the world. Uh, your hotel is a national, it's on the National Historic Register, and you brought it to that condition, did you not? That's correct. Uh, we bought the property. We actually have two buildings. Uh, one is an 1849 adobe which is a copy of the Larkin House in Monterey. It's the only Monterey colonial architectural style ever known to have been built in the Sierra. So it's also been named a California cultural landmark. And then our new building uh, is a Queen Anne that was constructed to house executives from the city and county of San Francisco during the construction of the Hetch Hetchy Dam, which you mentioned earlier. Right. And um, we'll be celebrating its centennial next year. Wow. Hey, I want to uh, bring one of your employees on the line. Andre <clears throat> Mueller is the chef at your Cellar Door restaurant. And I know uh, 
I know from my travels into the Sierra foothills uh, in my younger years, uh, sometimes it was hard to find a really tasty meal. But you've changed that in the Groveland area and are now serving up some really tasty fare with an extensive wine list. Calif- you can't you can't eat out in California without a great wine list, <laughs> Andre. Yeah, for sure. You know, Andre. Do you uh, welcome to the program? First off, Andre. Oh, good morning. Thank you for having us. Yes, and uh, do you work to create meals that compare nicely with the wines that are there? Uh, absolutely. Uh, we, we try to take in consideration um, uh, our extensive wine list uh, to pair with our meals. And uh, in starting with our new prime steak program, um, there's going to be a little something for everybody. What's your philosophy there when it comes to cooking? Mm-hmm. Uh, you have the the greater San Joaquin Valley at your, you know, just down the hill, I guess is how you'd put it. <laughs> Some of the mm-hmm. best agriculture in the world uh, right there. So uh, do you try to take advantage of all that? Absolutely. You know, freshness um, is, you know, one of the key um, cornerstones that we want to implement in our restaurant. Um you know, in flavor, flavor, flavor. Yeah. You know, we we we're not serving boring food here. We're we're trying to push the limits to uh, what we're doing. What are some of your influences? Um, you know what? My dad was a butcher. Um, he just recently retired from the butchers union about two years ago. Um, so I always had meat in the house. So uh, I'm a big steak guy. Mm-hmm. Um, so I look to that for influence. I, I like to, you know, I like my meat raw. So, right, <laughs> uh, steak tartare is is you know uh, a possibility. Yes. So uh, Andre and Peggy, I would imagine that uh, right about now you would typically be in extreme high gear, getting everything ready. What today's a Sunday, so you would uh, you know have a Sunday brunch or that sort of thing. Uh, checking people out at the hotel, it would be crazy busy as we start to round out the summer. What is the situation like in Groveland instead? It's totally crazy busy, but not with our tourists that we normally see. Mm -hmm. Again, we uh, have been blessed, I suppose you might say, if you will, Uh, silver lining of this horrible event. We have been filled every night with our media, firefighters, and law enforcement. Oh, right, because they have to have a place to stay. In the next few days, that's all going to go away. And what we would like to encourage people to do, of course, is to come up and see this moonscape that we're going to be left with. Yeah. Make photos and then come back and see how Mother Nature (laughs) recovers and what the forest looks like in a few months. And always after a major fire, the following spring, the wildflowers are unbelievable. And we have over a hundred species of wildflowers, including lady slipper orchids. And uh, I can highly recommend a hike up to Pilot Peak uh, in the spring to see these phenomenal flowers. What a great idea, Peggy. I love that. You have lived, Groveland has been home to many wildfires over the years, and uh, I imagine you've seen this moonscape come back to life, and rather quickly. Yes, and it does. It's really amazing, and uh, nature is a phenomenal thing. I'm also a rafter. You know, the Tuolumne River uh, is the number one whitewater river in the United States, and whitewater rafting is a huge segment of our summertime business. Yeah. So um, this fire began uh, right near the confluence of the Clavy and Tuolumne Rivers, which is one of the most spectacular places ever. Uh, The water churns and, you know, it's just amazing. Uh, Also up the Clavy River, there's a place called God's Bathtub, and I'm dreading seeing that for the moment. But again will recover beautifully. Well, you live in one of the most beautiful places ever. I know that I'm getting near Groveland when I can start to smell something called bear clover, or uh, other people call it mountain misery. To me, it smells like artichokes in a pressure cooker, and I love that smell. (laughs) (laughs) And so, uh, yeah, once I start to get a whiff of that in the air, I know I've hit the the right elevation for Groveland and pull off and maybe, uh, maybe get a Sierra Nevada in the Iron Door Saloon, one of the oldest, if not the oldest, operating bar in the uh, yes. state, right? And then right next door is your property. Well, that's right. 
Unfortunately, the iron door is the iron door is California's oldest continuously operating saloon. Wow, amazing! It was built and in 1852. I just uh, love that you were able to take some time out of your day to join us and give us a little update on what's happening there in Groveland. Innkeeper Peggy Mosley of the Groveland Hotel, by the way, in the Innkeeper's Hall of Fame just recently, last year, inducted one of just a handful of people that has been uh, put into there. Uh, Chef Andre Mueller for the cellar door right there. More information at groveland.com. Peggy and Andre, thank you so much for joining us. Good luck with everything. Thank you for having us. All right, stick around, everyone. Our final segment is next, a healthy snack chip. It's true. Coming up next. Hey, Central Coast locals, it is time.